Good morning, folks. Hope your brain is awake because we've got three key stories to cover. Let's first quickly head over to the sun at spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours and 193 angstroms. Apart from the bright umbral field movements at the sunspots, we don't see any activity of importance. We do continue to have low-level C-class solar flares picked up by the GOES satellite, but they are short-lived, low-level, as I said, and are not producing ejecta besides being distributed between the sunspots on the disk. You can see the flashing isn't picky, sort of hopping from one sunspot to the other. Let's zoom in on those sunspots and find the departing group with no more central umbra, nothing expected until it's on the limb or behind it. Meanwhile, the incoming group is also spreading with only the trailing portion having positive and negative umbra. In 171 angstroms, we can note the magnetic field connections between positive and negative spots, large and somewhat stable. Same caution, however, about the dental potential at the back. Any flares would have a genesis there. Solar wind here. One last drop in particle speed in purple in the electric field in geospace is calming considerably. KP back down into green. Next solar wind intensification should occur in about three days from the stream coming out of these dark coronal holes. They are small, but they are dead earth-facing today and presenting a significant seismic uptick potential. Quake watch, eyes on it. And now we have the second experiment from Dr. Robitaille claiming to defy Kirchhoff's law of thermal emission. Remember, this is the man who made the MRI machine what it is today, and without this key lesson, it wouldn't have happened. Anyone who can share this and his first experiment video with your local physics professors, it would be appreciated. Present an interrogatory rather than a declaration. Can you help me understand what this man is saying? Works a lot better than, here, this is why you are wrong. Might want to include his achievement history for context as well. Let's get a response on this, guys. Now you can dial back the brain waves for two seconds and just watch the ESO's and Terry's video. Here's the key fact. Gases are found too far from the stellar surface and cannot be caused by convection. They are looking to an unknown mechanism to explain it, and one imagines 9 out of 10 people here will look to electricity. That allows us to dance directly into our next story. We did a video a few days ago called Magnetic Reconnection in Cosmic Plasma, where mainstream magnetism meets Hannes Alfane's work and examples of current-driven stellar activity, and today we've got another in that realm. This new paper linked for you below dives a bit deeper. The electric model works for them, and they are going to use it to start predicting solar flares. If you have not seen Magnetic Reconnection and Cosmic Plasma, it is vital for anyone who cares about space weather, the electric universe, plasma physics, etc. Magnetic Reconnection and Cosmic Plasma. You can just Google it. We've got your wind maps, ways to get involved, and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support, and we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now. It's just before 5 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.